Hello, and welcome to the Drawing Tools Podcast. Have you ever admired a drawing and asked yourself, wow, how did they do that? Well, many times it is as much to do with the tools the artists use and techniques associated with those tools as the artist's skill level. Today I'm going to introduce to you some basic but very important drawing tools and get you actively exploring just what these tools do. For this podcast, I'm going to ask that you try some of the tools out as we go along. So you may want to have the following items handy. A wood case drawing pencil, number 6H, 6B, 4H, 4B, 2H, and 2B. Wood cased means the graphite is encased in wood, like a number 2 pencil. No mechanical pencils, please. Charcoal pencils, soft and medium. It should say this right on the pencil. You will also want a white charcoal pencil. A blending stump and tortillion. These are paper blending tools with pointed tips. Sandpaper or a sand board. This is just sandpaper attached to a little board designed specifically for drawing artists. Kneaded eraser and white vinyl eraser. The paper you will need is heavier, 80 or 90 pound drawing paper. The drawing paper should have a slight texture. This is called tooth, compared to smooth computer paper. Don't worry if there are a couple items that you do not have at the moment, or if there are a few items that you are not sure about. Just follow along as best you can. You'll get the idea. Okay, let's get started. We will start with the pencils and some drawing paper. Using your 6B pencil, make a mark on your paper applying just regular pressure. In fact, try a few cross-hatched marks. Now do the same with your 6H pencil. What you will notice is the 6B is much darker than the 6H. Now try one of your charcoal pencils. What do you notice about the charcoal compared to the graphite? You probably realize that the charcoal is like chalk very soft and dusty. It also makes a very dark mark on the paper. Drawing pencils are made of clay and graphite. The lower the proportions of clay, the softer the graphite becomes and the darker the mark will be. In drawing pencil terms, B stands for bold and H stands for hard. The graphite in an H pencil is very dense, therefore rendering lighter marks. The higher the number on the pencil, the more toward the lighter or darker end of the value spectrum it will be. Try more of the pencils as we continue. You may also want to try to vary the pressure as you make marks on the paper. You can get the same value from some of the pencils depending on the pressure that is applied. H pencils are great not just for lighter values, but for sketching and planning your illustration design. In fact, a 6H pencil is so light you may not find much use for it other than preliminary sketching. The B pencils, on the other hand, will be greatly used in a wide range when trying to achieve contrast or that pop that we are always striving for in drawing. Something to keep in mind, however, is that the lower ratio of clay to graphite in the pencil tends to leave a bit of a shine or glare. This may make the value look lighter when the light hits it. Keep this in mind when photographing your artwork. There are other types of drawing pencils out there that are meant to avoid this problem. You can consider upgrading as you develop your skills in drawing. By now you have probably tried each of your pencils, and you can see the value range that is achieved with each of them. There are many more pencils in the spectrum, all the way up to 9 on both sides. Again, you can add more to your drawing toolkit as you get a little better. As we continue, practice shading some basic forms on the drawing paper, perhaps a sphere. Think about your light source and remember that the shadow, the area farthest from the light, will be a crescent shape on your sphere. Let's talk about the various ways to blend the value together. We will use a blending stump, tortillion, and a chamois, or in your case, a tissue. The blending stump is tightly compressed paper that has a pointed tip on each end. The paper helps to move the graphite around and smooth the surface. You can use this to gradate or blend values together. You can also use it to smooth out visible pencil marks 
or you can even use the stump to draw with. Let's try it on a sphere. First, let's gradate two values into one another. Use your 6b, 2b, and 4h to lay down at least three gradual values on a sphere, leaving the reflection white or blank. Now, gently use the stump to blend between each value. It is important not to press too hard. If you don't want to blend the tip of the stump too much, and you also don't want to damage the surface of the paper. A useful tip when blending is to only blend in one direction versus back and forth. Each time you put the stump to the paper, the graphite that is left on the stump from before is reapplied. By applying the strokes all in the same direction, you will maintain a nice gradated value from dark to light. The other blending tool is a tortillion. This tool is very similar to the blending stump. The difference is that it's a tightly rolled paper rather than compressed and only has one pointed end. This is great for smoothing tones and evening out value range. It is used in much the same way as the blending stump. I like to hold this tool on its edge a bit and I also use this one for a little bit larger surface area, although you will never use either of these tools for massive blending areas. For that, you would use the facial tissue or a leather chamois. A chamois is a cloth that can be used for blending. If you do not have one already, get one. It works wonders to create lusciously smooth graphite texture. With any of these tools, you will want to be really careful about not over blending. In fact, drawing is done in layers. You start with a light sketch, then refine the lines as needed. You then lay down some value range using a blending tool to smooth, even, and gradate. These blending tools will naturally lift some of the graphite off the paper. So then you have to go back with a B pencil to bring back the contrast, and so on and so forth. By now, you may have noticed that the tortillon and the blending stump are full of graphite. At this point, you can use these as drawing tools to make marks on your paper. Sometimes, when I'm ready to add details into my drawings, I like to intentionally lift the graphite from a dark area onto my tortillon and use it to draw in fine details. If you are not quite ready for these fine details yet, there is a way to bring the tortillon back to its clean, original form. Although the tip will continue to soften as you use the tools, this is when you will use that handy little sandboard. Regular fine sandpaper works just as well. Just tilt the blending tool a little on the edge and then gently rub it onto the sandboard. Voila! The sandboard is also great for bringing back a nice sharp tip to your pencil as you work. An X-Acto knife is an also a great alternative to a pencil sharpener that would normally eat away at your pencil faster than you may like. How are your spheres coming? Are you getting the hang of these blending and shading techniques? Try and change up the light source. Also experiment with other organic forms. Let's talk a little bit about charcoal. The charcoal, as you have learned, creates a very dark mark. In fact, the only time I actually draw with the charcoal is when I'm applying the darkest values and shadows. In a charcoal drawing, I will outline only the shadows and add darker value range first. Much of the rest of my drawing is done with a chamois, tortillion, and blending stump. Try it! With charcoal, there is no lighter value range as with graphite. You may choose to use an 8 graphite to add lighter values in a charcoal drawing. I would not, however, mix B graphites with charcoal due to the glare and shine that I mentioned before. Charcoal is more of a matte finish, and the contrast of the gloss and matte doesn't really mesh well, but that's just my opinion. The way to achieve the lightest value and complete contrast in a charcoal drawing is with an eraser. Yes, they are not just for mistakes. You draw with them. There's also white charcoal. Let's talk about the eraser first. You will use what is called a kneaded eraser. It is a malleable eraser that sort of resembles silly putty. This is an awesome tool. You can use it to add in reflections and fine details by molding it into a fine point and actually erasing over a dark area. Try this now by erasing into a solid area of charcoal on your paper. Pretty cool, huh? But now there is charcoal on your kneaded eraser. 
You're probably thinking to yourself, boy, I'm going to go through a lot of these and fast. Worry not. Just pinch and squeeze the eraser a bit and the charcoal is kneaded right back into itself. Magic! This is also a good exercise mechanism for your tired drawing fingers. The white vinyl eraser can also be used to draw in details and is much more sturdy and can be used to erase those dark, stubborn areas. Unless, of course, you've pushed way too hard with your pencil, charcoal, or blending tool, and then it's pressed down into the tooth of the paper. Then it's a lost cause. The mark is there for good. Before we conclude this podcast, I would like to offer you a few more tips in drawing. First, you don't want to lean on your drawing with the side of your hand. Put a piece of paper under your hand so you don't smudge up your drawing. I also like to use a soft bristle paintbrush, like a watercolor brush, to move away charcoal and graphite dust and also pieces left from erasing. This way you will not streak unwanted marks across your paper. I try not to use my fingers for blending. Instead, I wrap a piece of tissue around my finger. This will leave your drawing much more consistent overall. And finally, just have fun, experiment, find new uses for these tools, and introduce new tools that will help to achieve your overall desired effects. There are no rules, just suggestions from those who have found success in drawing. Thanks for listening.